Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. And today we just saw the news that the India China standoff at the border, Chinese troops have actually started backing down. They haven't completely gone away, it seems, but they are moving back away from the line of control, which is awesome. Yeah. That means they know that India is no joke. And finally. India is supported by some. People. Yeah, and that India is being supported by Japan, by Australia, by the by US. all these other countries that have defeated China already. Right, and are like surrounding some of the areas surrounding China. I think China finally realized that if they started a war, like they if they win. started this with with India, the world is right now behind India between yeah. the viruses, between the lies and the deceit that the Chinese Communist Party has brought upon themselves. And the world has kept closed eyes until now. I think people are finally opening their eyes and the other countries good. are getting involved. And I think China saw that they were going to lose. And so they backed off. Now, we know when the bully starts the fight, when people fight back just as hard, if they're going to back off. But as soon as off. you stop having people behind you or you stop having your troops there they're gonna come right back they are so we need india to keep tight keep it tight at the border don't back down right now and keep playing politics we know yeah. modi g has already banned the 59 apps that we applaud him so much yeah. for and but we need more things made in india because india has better quality and we mm -hmm. want people to look at the tag and be like this is made in india this yeah. is going to be good quality because right now china is not doing fair trade they're doing free trade you get a dollar he gets they get five and that's not right and if they're going to keep this up and not do fair trade then we should stop doing business with them yeah and we should start doing made in india because made in india is better yes yes free trade needs to go out the window one china policy needs to go out the window um tibet needs its freedom. We hope that bill here in the U.S. Oh, goes yeah. through. Um, Hong Kong, uh, Uyghur Muslims. I think this is why they backed off. Because not only do they have three or four countries surrounding them, India being strong, Australia, Japan, like but the these... U.S. backing them, they have parts of other countries around them that are in them that are not theirs that they took over that they're gonna fight against them that i think would fight for their freedom even harder if if china went to war right now so it would become like russia when it broke up into pieces like this is what i think would have happened everybody would have started their freedom struggles to the full extent with yeah. china trying to fight India or the US or whoever they were going to go to end up war with this is what they they realized and but I know they're not going to back down they're backing no. up but they're not going to back down so, so we need don't back down don't back down don't let up on that border yet and definitely don't let up on the politics this is where we want to see political chess keep hitting them on the trade keep hitting them on I would love Trump to ban the Chinese yeah. apps here in the US that would be awesome um and i hope he does that we want to see this free tibet tibet bill go through um because it's not the only place in china that needs freedom yeah. um taiwan and hong kong it's one thing after the other that china has taken over and they think the world is blind and stupid and we're not this coronavirus hopefully has been a wake-up call for the entire world and hopefully this will put a stop to China. There needs to be a lot of answers on their yeah. behalf. So let's start up this video. It began more than 60 days ago, the India-China border standoff, the longest and the bloodiest face-off with China since the 1962 war. Now there's the first sign of de-escalation. Soldiers on both sides have begun stepping back. You'll see reports in newspapers tomorrow. And the headlines might read something like this. Chinese troops withdraw from the Galwan post. Only this okay. is not tomorrow's. Yeah. This is from July 1962. 15th July 1962. Same place, same players, similar situation. Almost 100 days after this headline was published, the Chinese attacked India. 
So it would be unwise to commit the same mistake again and trust them this time. Yes. Yeah. Celebration right them. now will be premature. It's best to approach this with caution. Mm -hmm. The India-China border standoff is as old as the India-China border. And for 70 years now, India and China have failed to clearly define the line of actual control, which is basically the crux of the problem. So escalations and de-escalations will continue until the root cause is addressed. Let's talk about the recent events. The standoff began in early May when Chinese troops tried to intrude into Indian territory. It escalated three weeks ago when 20 Indian soldiers were killed in action in Galwan. So sad. India has retaliated in various ways by scrutinizing Chinese businesses, blocking Chinese apps, also preparing for any military escalation, all the while holding talks at various levels to de-escalate. Tonight we can report what we're calling a limited resolution. There is disengagement at three flashpoints, Galwan, the Hot Springs and Gogra. Chinese troops were spotted moving away at these three locations. They've gone back by one to two kilometers. Sources tell me on that the PLA, yeah. the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese Army, was seen moving back its vehicles. Tents have been removed. This is at patrol point 14, the location of the violent clash between Indian and Chinese troops, the clash that happened on the 15th of June. So you could say this is the beginning of the end, but early days. Exactly a week ago, India announced a ban on Chinese apps, a decision that signaled a new low in the India-China relationship. On Friday, India's Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, visited Ladakh. He sent a strong message to Beijing that India will defend itself against all threats. Exactly. And all of this may have contributed to what we are seeing right now. But what specifically has changed in the last 48 hours? It was a two-hour-long phone call on Sunday that is said to have led to the disengagement. Special representatives from both sides held talks. From India, it was National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. From China, it was Foreign Minister Wang Yi. The special representative mechanism is an old one. It was especially set up to tackle the border issue. It was created back in 2003 after former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's visit to China. Now, both sides seem to have fallen back on the same mechanism to, set, to settle this standoff. And sources tell Vion that the talks were cordial. The conversation will continue. The foundation of today's de-escalation was reportedly built last week. This was during the core commander level talks five days ago. Reports say that during these talks, both sides agreed to a step-by-step de-escalation. But at the risk of repeating myself, I have to say the situation remains precarious. Yeah. It's not over till it's over. And with China, it never really it's is over. over. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a naysayer, just advising caution. And let me give you three more reasons why. Number one, look at the location of this standoff, the Galwan Valley. It's not your traditional flashpoint. Suddenly, the Chinese became aggressive here. Galwan has not witnessed any major clashes before in a while. And now Beijing says that the entire Galwan Valley belongs to China. In the year 1959, Aye, yeah. China's then premier, Zhu Enlai, had said this on record. He said that a 1956 map showed the entire Galwan Valley as part of India. But now more than 60 years later, China has dismissed both the map and the statement. Now China claims Galwan and objects to India's border infrastructure projects there. And this is what has triggered the standoff in May. The situation is far from resolved. The second reason I want to give is Sikkim. Nakula in Sikkim is still in focus. This area also saw a standoff in May. There were clashes reportedly. Disengagement is fine, but the issue will persist as long as China makes baseless claims on Indian territory and disregards historical commitments. Yeah. And the third reason I want to cite is Nepal, China's new proxy. At China's behest, Nepal is claiming disputed territories, even constitutionally changing its map. About a month ago, Nepal escalated the dispute by adding six new border outposts. Recent reports say that two of them have been removed. But there's nothing to suggest that China won't be fomenting trouble. Mm. China's intentions are questionable. It is using its military to conduct its foreign policy and grab land. Today's yeah. disengagement is a good beginning. But there's a also a question. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the new normal? two steps forward, four steps back. Remember, this withdrawal, for want of a better word, is not status quo ante. 
they haven't withdrawn completely. So have both sides now accepted this as the new status quo? Is this where they'll remain? Also, how can India settle this more permanently? By forcing China to define the buffer zone, by clearly demarcating the buffer zone and getting armies out of there on both sides. This zone should be for policing, not for defending borders. Unless this basic agreement is achieved, even complete withdrawal will not spell the end of this. I think she has a huge case. Like, don't yeah. trust this. Even though they're stepping back, I feel like that's a good sign. They're not all the way back, and they're going to be ready to attack hit again. you. Yeah. yeah. So this is like just a little maybe a distraction again. Like they're backing off, so don't, don't back worry. Down. Yeah, don't back down, India. You need to stay strong. You need to keep your military strong at the border, and you need to hit them politically. Hit them hard. Hard, yeah. Like... The app band was the first start, and that was a good start. We need to work on fair trade, not free trade. And we'd rather you focus on made in India. So we can get rid of all this Chinese stuff. Yeah. All these plastic crap. We, yeah. We would love the world to say, oh, it's made in India. I want to buy it. It's awesome, yeah. It's a good quality product. It's beautiful. Um... And, and we love it. And that we would love to see that all over the world for people to say, yeah, we got it because it was made in India. Um, you know, we would be a huge supporter of that. So um, the the no more one China policy that should yeah. have gone out the window a long time ago. Long time ago. I, I really think the world is just China has just made everybody stupid to them and they've been doing all these things and nobody has paid attention until now. And so hopefully this coronavirus has been the first wake up call, but Hong Kong, Tibet, Taiwan, they need to get their freedom back. Yeah. Um, Uyghur Muslims need to not be in concentration camps. And there's other areas I know that China has occupied that they need to take their hands off of. It's not the first time, but I think they forget it's 2020 and it's not like medieval times. We have satellites. Yeah. Like We can see what's happening, where you're moving, where you're not moving, like what you're doing this is not like you can swoop in and take over a country and nobody's going to pay attention to you anymore now the whole world is looking at you now every time somebody sneezes in your country you're yelling we have a new virus because you're afraid the world is going to slam you again because you kept COVID-19 quiet for months. But you have so months. many new viruses. Like, where are they all coming from? Yeah, that's a whole nother video, guys. Yeah. We're, we're going to react on that next. But um, this this is just, don't back down. This is no. the first start. This is the time to hit China politically and hit it hard. Where if it you hurts. want free freedom for Tibet, for Taiwan, for Hong Kong. This is when India needs to get behind the U.S. If hopefully this bill passes. This is when you follow behind the U.S. and say, we support this too. And we yeah. hope other countries do the same. You know, we did that video on wishing Dalai Lama uh, a happy 85th birthday. And there were so, so many big political leaders from all over the world that love him and respect him. But they need to also support him politically, not just say it on camera. And so we've been writing our letters and we're going to continue to write letters. We're going to yeah. continue to preach on this channel that Tibet needs its freedom. And if you're here in the U.S. and you can write to your congressmen, your congresswomen and say, please support this bill. Please do that. We will do everything in our power here that we can um, to give a voice to Tibetans. Um, but they're not the only ones. Hong Kong now is being silenced, you know, and it's it's one thing after the other after the other. And I think they they are backing down because, for one, they realize India is not going to turn the other cheek, you know, like Gandhi would turn the other cheek and let them slap the other cheek. Modi G is not turning the other cheek. He's going to slap you twice. So the lion is roaring and is not backing down. Yeah. And that's good. Show your power. 
Um, this is why we also talk Second Amendment here. Like we really believe that layers and layers and layers of defense. So when you open your doors for Made in India, get some of these weaponry, get some of these companies in so you can internally make these weapons and then you can make them better and then you can service your police and your military. You can make the fighter jets yourself. Yeah. Like these are the things so you don't have to rely on some of these other countries when you can make it internally. We not only bring jobs, but then you start building up that line of security. Building for, up your empire. Yeah, exactly. So we support India in this. We think Modi G has done an amazing job. We salute the soldiers that not only are out on the border, but are keeping everybody safe right now. Um, and we pray for your safety. So we hope the political chess keeps going. We need to hit yeah. them hard. So um, hopefully we're going to react next on the viruses that now have come out left and right from China. Yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.